When people talk about the challenges of landing on the moon, one issue that often comes up is how expensive it is, especially when using Orion and the SLS rocket. But there's actually a pretty simple way to cut costs. Instead of launching Orion on the super pricey, non-reusable SLS, why not use a cheaper option, like SpaceX's Starship? Funny enough, that's exactly what NASA and Lockheed Martin are starting to consider. So how would that actually work? Lockheed Martin is starting to shift toward a future where the Orion spacecraft plays a bigger role in commercial spaceflight. Thanks to growing reusability, a stronger focus on cost, and openness to flying on different rockets, Orion could soon move beyond just government missions. Company officials have even said they're open to offering Orion missions as a service, meaning NASA wouldn't need to own or operate the spacecraft directly. In a recent update on their website called Exploring Commercial Services for Orion, Lockheed included a quote from Kirk Shireman, the company's vice president and Orion program manager. He said, It's clear to us that Artemis missions need to be more cost-effective and efficient. Industry needs to take steps to enable NASA to sustain Artemis, while investing in future deep space human exploration systems and technologies. This shift toward a commercial model is also supported by the FY26 President's Budget Request, which proposes moving to commercial transportation services for later Artemis missions. The goal is to lower costs, increase launch frequency, and encourage more industry leadership. Lockheed is looking at a phased approach to make this happen. It would start with things like recovering the crew module after splashdown, post-mission servicing to allow quicker reuse, managing cargo and payloads, and handling pre-launch tasks like fueling and integrating the launch abort system. These jobs are labor-intensive, but don't need much new engineering or government oversight, making them ideal for commercial partners to take on. Eventually, Lockheed hopes to take on even more responsibility, building future Orion spacecraft under fixed-price contracts and delivering the full mission capability as a commercial service, similar to how NASA now works with private companies for crew missions to the ISS. The current Orion development contract wraps up capsule design with Artemis II. Starting with Artemis III, spacecraft production falls under a new operations contract, which gradually shifts to fixed pricing and emphasizes cost savings through reuse. And it's already paying off. Artemis V is expected to cost less than half of Artemis II, with another 30% cost reduction projected by Artemis VIII. With plans to eventually move away from the expensive SLS rocket, Orion could actually become a cost-effective spacecraft. But there's still a big question. Orion is pretty big compared to most human-rated systems flying today. So if not SLS, what rockets are actually capable of launching Orion beyond Earth orbit? What are the realistic options when it comes to future launch providers? Well, according to Lockheed, as part of their commercialization efforts, they're actively looking into all the available launch vehicles. That includes a range of U.S. providers, some European options, and of course, the SLS itself. The idea is to evaluate each one and figure out which systems are actually capable of carrying Orion and supporting the mission. And here's the interesting part. They say there are multiple launch vehicles that could get the job done. They're not ready to name names just yet, but the capability is definitely there. In fact, Orion has already flown on a Delta IV Heavy in the past, so there's confidence that this challenge is solvable with today's or near-future technology. Imagine using something like a Vulcan Centaur to get Orion into orbit. Then, you launch a second Vulcan carrying a Centaur upper stage loaded with fuel. You mate that to Orion, refuel, and then use that stage to push the spacecraft further out, maybe to the moon or even beyond. Lockheed said that's absolutely a viable scenario. Honestly, if we're already talking about in-orbit refueling, why not go all the way and use the most capable option out there? Yep, I'm talking about Starship. SpaceX's fully reusable beast of a rocket that can haul up to 100 tons to the moon. So, naturally, the question is, could you launch Orion on Starship? Technically, it's not that hard. There have already been a few ideas floated about how that could work. One of the simplest is to use an expendable version of Starship's upper stage. Stripped down, no flaps, no heat shield, no need for re-entry. And Orion wouldn't need Starship's full payload fairing either, so you'd cut down the hardware even more. That kind of Starship variant could be built for around $40 million, a fraction of the cost of traditional systems. Now, the full Orion stack, including the European service module and launch abort system, weighs in at about 33.5 tons. 
So getting it to the moon would require a bit more than just putting it on top of a starship, but there are a few workable paths. One option is to attach a large upper stage, like the Exploration Upper Stage, EUS, which offers serious power but also costs around $800 million, and might not even need to be fully fueled. Another is to use an ICPS stage, like the one currently used with SLS Block 1, if ULA can still produce them. But probably the simplest and most cost-effective solution is just to refuel that expendable Starship upper stage in orbit. And here's the thing, waiting for Starship's orbital refueling capability to be ready might still end up being faster and way cheaper than building new ICPS or EUS stages. You'd be trading complex infrastructure and expensive hydrogen handling for a system that SpaceX is already actively developing. From a hardware perspective, Orion has already proven it can fly on a 5-meter diameter adapter sitting on top of the ICPS, and Starship can accommodate adapters between 5 to 8 meters. Some estimates even suggest Starship could carry Orion to the moon and return the booster, fully reusable, with margin to spare. That would be a massive leap forward in terms of efficiency efficiency and cost. Here's the breakdown. Starship's booster, even with 100 tons of propellant left over after ascent, can land safely. That alone gives about 3.1 kilometers per second of delta V. The expendable upper stage, with 1,500 tons of propellant and weighing around 100 tons, could deliver roughly 8.7 kilometers per second, putting the total delta V for the Orion plus ICPS stack at over 11.5 kilometers per second, more than SLS by around 1.5 kilometers per second. Some concepts even go further. Instead of messing with ICPS or EUS at all, just use two expendable stages, Super Heavy plus Starship, and be done with it. In that case, Super Heavy provides about 3.7 kilometers per second, and the Starship upper stage, carrying Orion directly, could give 9.2 kilometers per second more. That's 12.9 kilometers per second total, more than enough to send Orion to the moon. This approach simplifies everything. No need to worry about building more ICPS stages. No need to deal with liquid hydrogen at LC-39A, and far fewer moving parts. And there's even a bonus for the crew. Since this setup gets them out of low Earth orbit faster, they spend less time in the Van Allen radiation belts compared to the slower ICPS trajectory. That means a safer and quicker ride to lunar orbit. As bizarre as the idea might sound at first, launching Orion on Starship honestly makes more sense than sticking with SLS. From an energy standpoint, it checks out. From a safety perspective, it's solid. And financially, it's not even close. Starship blows SLS out of the water. The only real concern is the ground infrastructure. But let's be honest, SpaceX could upgrade the necessary systems in a fraction of the time and budget it would take to get the SLS launch platform back into regular use. That thing is a maintenance nightmare. Yes, hydrogen infrastructure would be needed, but that's not a deal-breaker. Pad 39A already had hydrogen systems in the shuttle era, and producing hydrogen from methane, CH4, isn't exactly rocket science. Well, not the hard part of it, anyway. Some reworking of plumbing and systems on the launch tower would be needed, sure. But in my opinion, a lot of people are blowing this part way out of proportion. This is SpaceX we're talking about. They move fast, they iterate, they adapt. There are a few practical tweaks Orion would need. For example, it doesn't have lift points compatible with Starship's launch tower arms, so a crane would likely be needed to integrate it vertically. It would also still need umbilical connections right up to launch, and of course, a crew access arm or bridge would have to be added to the tower. But again, none of that is insurmountable, especially given what SpaceX has already pulled off with their Starship infrastructure. So yeah, it might sound a little unconventional, but when you really break it down, flying Orion on Starship could actually be the smarter move. It has the potential to make Orion missions far more efficient, significantly cheaper, and even safer in some respects. It's definitely an idea worth keeping an eye on. That said, probably the biggest technical hurdle right now is orbital refueling. It's never been done at this scale, and Starship's tanks are massive. It would likely take several refueling flights to fully pop them off. But really, it all comes down to how you structure the mission. Lockheed has said they're actively exploring a wide range of options. Some involve orbital refueling, and others use storable propellants that wouldn't require refueling at all. It's all part of building a flexible mission architecture. And let's not forget, most Orion missions aren't just about getting the capsule to the moon. It's about what happens once you're there. Are you bringing a lander? A rover? Are you docking with Gateway? Delivering cargo modules? Each mission has different needs, and that drives how the launch and propulsion systems are designed. 
As for now, NASA's Orion spacecraft just took what may be its second-to-last ride on Earth, rolling into the iconic Vehicle Assembly Building, VAB, at Kennedy Space Center late Thursday night. The next time it hits the road, it'll be stacked atop the fully assembled Space Launch System rocket, heading to the launch pad for final pre-launch prep ahead of Artemis II. This Orion capsule, named Integrity by its four-person crew, made the roughly seven-mile journey from the Launch Abort System facility to the VAB, arriving around midnight. Almost four years ago to the day, the Artemis I Orion made a similar trip, though this time things were a lot quieter. With the U.S. government now more than two weeks into a shutdown, much of NASA's workforce is furloughed. Still, critical Artemis work, covering missions 2, 3, and 4, is exempt, allowing this milestone to stay on track. According to Artemis II launch director Charlie Blackwell Thompson, the next big phase starts inside the VAB. Once Orion is stacked on the rocket, the testing campaign kicks into full swing. Some of the testing will look familiar, like comm checks and interface tests from Artemis I. But this time, with a crew on board, things get more complex. A big addition is the countdown demonstration test. This test includes suiting up the astronauts, strapping them into Orion, and running through a full countdown, stopping just before launch. They'll even simulate an emergency egress giving crews a chance to rehearse how they'd exit the capsule quickly if needed. Once those tests are complete, the rocket will roll out to Launch Pad 39B, where teams will hook everything up and continue testing, including configuring the emergency slide wire baskets, just in case a quick escape from the pad is ever needed. All this leads up to the wet dress rehearsal, a full tanking and countdown test that goes right up to 29 seconds before simulated liftoff. After that, and assuming no major issues, they'll stay at the pad for the final countdown. Launch is currently set for no earlier than February 5th, 2026, though NASA is still evaluating windows. When it does fly, Artemis II will send four astronauts, including one from Canada, on a 10-day journey around the moon, paving the way for future lunar landings.